you have your Bibles, let's take our Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Like I said this morning, I'll say about tonight, I knew the devil was going to fight. I knew that. I mean, we know he's going to fight every time we come to church. We know he's going to try to hinder every time we come. But when you preach a message like I preached this morning, and you get ready to preach a message like I'm getting ready to preach tonight, Satan ain't got no choice in the matter. He's got to fight. He's got to come against us. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. If you're there, say amen. amen. Look at verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Let's pray. God, we love you. And God, I ask your hand to be upon me tonight, God. I need your touch, Lord. God, I pray, God, you'd help us tonight, God, as... We get into your word, God. I know, Lord, it's not going to be one of the shouting messages, God, but I pray, God, you'd help folks to take heed and listen, dear God. And God, just help us tonight, dear God, to expose Satan for what he really is. God, I pray, God, you'd move in the church, God. Bless the reading of your word. And God, help us to do what you would have us to do. And we'll praise you for all you do, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're getting close to Halloween. And you know, if you, if you, if you pay attention to... Uh, the, the stores, they've already got all the different things out, you know, and, um, and I didn't even think about that when the Lord started dealing with me about this sermon. I want to preach a little while tonight on pulling back the curtain on Satan. See, a lot of the thing about it is a lot of times we come to church and I've heard several people tonight uh, say that something like this, the devil's been fighting, Satan's done this, and the devil's fought this way, and and I mean, I mean, just look at the services today. How, the, how the, Satan has tried to disrupt. Hey, but God's still got the glory. Come to church tonight. The, 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 the system don't work. And, and you, you see how, 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 how Satan, if we ain't careful, Satan can get in. And, and a lot of times we, we sit there saying, we want to blame the guys in the sound booth, and we want to blame this one, and we want to blame that one, when all actuality is the devil is doing his very best to, to kill, steal, and destroy Preacher Buddy C. Uh, uh, told me about a sermon he preached one time. He was at a little church, and I'm not going to call the name of the church because most of you know where it's at. So most of you has been there. He said he was preaching a message, and, and in that little church, uh, a man in the back uh, of, the, of the sound room that run the sound system, he, Preacher Buddy said I would come in, and he would ask me, he said, do you know what you're going to preach tonight? And, and most of Preacher Buddy said he had four or five different things on his mind. He didn't really know what he was going to preach about that night. He said, but the guy said well, he wanted to put it up on the screens, and and that made the man mad. To make a long story short, he said the man got upset. He had paid for the sound equipment. He said he turned everything off and locked the door and left the church. The guy got up to do the special singing and went, had, had no sound system. He said, you know, he said, I'm telling you, he said the devil had that service. He said, he said you could feel it. He said, he, said, he said, something was telling me, he said, just go ahead and dismiss the service right now. Go ahead and call it off. You've lost this opportunity. He said, but God said, preach. He said, and I saw God come back in and take that service back. And souls got saved. That you can't just quit when the devil starts fighting. The devil ain't going to fight you if there ain't something there worth fighting about. Don't you think about quitting tonight. Don't you think about giving up tonight. I mean, when stuff starts happening, we could have just said, well, we'll just get into the preaching. No, we ain't going to just, with the, if God said sing, glory to God, we're going to sing. We can't just quit when the devil fights, because he's going to fight. I want you to notice something. This scripture I read to you, that word Jesus said, told Peter, he said, Satan hath desired. That word desired right there, if you go back to the original, it means to demand or desire. Can you imagine as Satan come to Jesus and said, I want Peter today. I 
I want Tony to date. Preacher, that don't happen. Tell that to Job. The Bible says that Satan came against Job. So if Satan is desired or Satan demanded to, to, to have Peter, but thank God Jesus said, Jesus said, hey, I have prayed for you. Now, don't you notice some things in, in the Scripture? The Bible talks about Satan wants to sift every one of us. That word sift comes from a word, and it basically means to riddle or sift. When I read that and I got to studying about that, I got thinking, what in the world does that mean? When I, when I say riddle, most of the time we think of a little nursery rhyme type thing. That ain't what it's talking about. If you go back and study it out, that word riddle has four different uh, meanings. Number one, it is to pierce with many holes, like to riddle a target with bullets. That's what Satan wants to do to you. He wants to destroy you. I told you, John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and destroy. And he wants to do his very best. He wants to riddle your testimony. He wants to riddle your life. He wants to riddle your home. He wants to riddle everything about you. That is his desire. That is what he is trying to demand today. I want to destroy them. That's what he was telling Jesus about Peter. I demand him. I'm going to destroy him. And he would have destroyed him, Alan. But Jesus said, hey, I prayed for you. You better be glad you got somebody sitting at the right hand of the Father because you ain't no match for your enemy. It means to riddle. Number two, it means to fill or affect with something undesirable or to weaken. To fill with or affect with something undesirable or to weaken. That's what Satan wants to do. That is his main job. He don't care if you come to church. Come to church all you want to. He just don't want you to be a successful Christian. He just don't want you to be a strong Christian. He don't care if you sing in the choir. He don't care if you pay your tithe. He don't care if you teach Sunday school. What he wants to do is just get in and nag and get in and fill you with, with, with un, 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 unhealthy thoughts and, and, and emotions and things like that. And what happens is we let him. We let him. We let him get in our minds. We let him get in our, our thoughts. And, and what we do, we go out and then we act out on what he is telling us to do. Preacher Christians don't do that. I'll get into that in a minute. If you think Christians ain't affected by Satan, You've lost your mind. I want you to know something else. Number three, the, uh, that word riddle means to impair or refute completely by persistent verbal attacks. Don't that sound like what the devil does? How many of you the devil ever got on your shoulder? Huh? You know good well. You, that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. Next hour. You know you want to do this, you know, you know that, you know that, you know that. I mean, all day long. Right up to the time that you rebuke him. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says every devil's got to flee. That, but that's what he wants to do, Brother Jerry. He wants to just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. He ain't going to give up. He's persistent. The Bible talks about when he tempted Jesus, the Bible says, and he left for a season. That means he's coming back. For some of us in here, we think, God, I fought the devil, and I, I got rid of the devil. Guess what? You ain't got rid of nothing. You might have knocked him down one time. You might have got him off your back for just a little while. But guess what? There's another day coming. There's another devil coming. There's another one coming. He will not stop. He will not quit until Jesus calls us home. He's going to fight. And then the last word, the last definition of the word riddle is to sift. It's the, an image of taking a big basket uh, and putting gravel in it and shaking it and getting all the bad stuff out and trying to leave what the devil's wanting to do. He's wanting to shake you. He's wanting to get all the good stuff out and leave the bad. That's what his job is. And we, and the, we let him do it. We let him do it. We need to see him for what he really is. The Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 44, You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in truth, because he has no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. How many times have we listened to the devil? 
Everybody say amen. All right, now, now we got that covered. Why'd you do that, preacher? Because every one of us in here is listening to the devil. Every last one of us has listened to the devil. When we knew, preacher, when we knew it was a lie. The Bible says he was a liar from the beginning. And we let him get in our minds, and then we listen to him when we know it's wrong. Everybody say amen right there. I've done it. You've done it. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, I've done it multiple times. You ain't got to amen me right there. I'll amen myself. I know it. I'm telling you right now, there have been times that I've let the devil get in my mind, and I've just ran, I ran with it, and I listened to him. The whole time Jesus was telling me no, and I said, no, I don't want to listen to that. I don't want to listen to this voice. Rest of you that won't get honest, you ain't going to get no help. We need to really see him for what he is. He is a liar. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 12, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what we're fighting tonight. We're not fighting, fighting flesh and blood. My enemy is not Wes. My enemy is not Preacher John. My enemy is not Clint. My enemy is not Greg. My enemy is the devil. I can't see him, but I know he's there. We need to see that. When husbands and wives fuss and fight, that's not your enemy. That's the devil trying to get in and riddle your house. Preacher, I like fussing and fighting. Then you are of your father the devil. Y'all know I'm going to tell it like it is. If you like confusion, you like stirring up stuff all the time, you like causing confusion, you like being aggravating all the time, then you are of your father the devil. That's what the word says. The wiles of the devil. That word wiles there comes from the Greek word methodia. It's where we get our, our word method. We ought to be able to, to see the methods of the devil. The tra- uh, uh, why, the, the, this meaning means to travel over or uh, uh, travesty or trickery, to wile, to lie in wait. John chapter 10, verse 10, I told you this, the thief cometh not to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. We need to be able to see the devil for what he really is. Now, I want you to notice something. He will use Christians. Somebody said, devil ain't never used me. He's using you right now then. He's using you while you're sitting in the church. <clears throat> while I got this on my mind, I'm just going to go ahead and preach it. Altar call is being given. Heads are bowed. Eyes closed. Christians supposed to be praying. Here's what a lot of so-called Christians do. Hand me my coat. We get ready to go. Go ahead. Get your pocketbook ready. This one over here is grabbing the Bible, heading to the door. (laughs) And you don't think the devil uses Christians. Supposed to be praying. Souls lying in the balance. Preacher up there just a preaching his heart out. And you trying to be all holy and read your Bible. Preacher preaching in Psalms and you over there in Mark. Got real quiet right there. That's Satan. That's Satan. I know the service goes long every once in a while. But Brother Larry said one time we used to run all night for the devil. My goodness, come home and the, and the sun coming up. And if the service goes five minutes longer than what you think it ought to do, man, you're grabbing for everything you can get your hands on. You're making all kind of noise, one in front of you under conviction, gripping the pew, and you back there passing notes, wanting to know where we're going to go eat. (laughs) 
The devil will use us. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 16, uh, Jesus is talking. Jesus has just told Peter, you, 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 you the rock. You are the man. And Peter says something stupid. I know he was free will Baptist. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those things that be of men. Mark chapter 8, verse 33. But when he had turned about, he looked on his disciples and rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. If, if the devil can use Peter, don't you think he can use Scoopy? Don't you think he can use Skip? Don't you think he can use Greg? There ain't none of us in here as close as Peter was. And the devil used him. That's the wiles of the devil. That's the wiles of the devil. Every time we speak a word, that's the wiles of the devil. If it comes out of our mouth and it's offensive, that's the wiles of the devil. We know that no confusion is of God. We know that's of the devil. And we let the devil use us. He'll tempt us. The Bible tells us in three of the four Gospels, but in, in Luke chapter 4, the Bible talks about the temptation of Christ. Jesus Christ walked this earth for 33 years, Billy, Brother Billy, and never did one thing wrong. Never did one thing wrong. And Satan takes him out to the wilderness and tempts him. You know, I have heard of people that think they got so holy that the devil didn't bother them no more. What happened was they got so holy that God didn't bother them anymore. Satan is out there. That's what he does. The wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil. Now, what, when we talk about temptation, well, there's all kind of temptation. When we watch TV and you see something on TV and your mind don't stay exactly where it needs to be, guess what? Temptation. And you ride down the road and you see something on a billboard that you, and your mind kind of, kind of drifts away from where, that's temptation. When we listen to the radio and we listen to things that, that take our mind back to where it shouldn't be, that's temptation. That's the wiles. That's the methods of the devil. Don't you know something else about the devil, about the wiles of the devil? He'll distort the word of God. The Bible tells us in Genesis, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said... Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. <clears throat> Notice what the devil did. God told Adam, You can eat of every tree, but don't eat of the tree in the middle, in the center. The tree of knowledge. Satan came to Eve and said, Hey, didn't God tell you you couldn't eat of none of them trees? That's what the word said. He distorted the word of God. Now listen, there's people that stand behind pulpits that distort the word of God. They take the, they take the word of God and they want to mold it for what they want. They try to meet their agenda with it. I'm telling you, that's of the devil. And if you, find, if you listen to people on TV and you, find, you hear somebody that does that, turn that joker off. Because that's the devil. You ain't got no business listening to that. He tried it with Jesus when he was tempting Jesus. He said, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands shall thou bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. He ought, that just shows you how stupid the devil is. He going to misquote the Bible to the one that wrote it. He didn't leave, but Larry, he didn't leave out but just a little bit. Just the, the preacher, what he left out really didn't matter. Don't tell me it don't matter. Bible says you change one jot or one tittle. Hey, it matters, amen. He'll distort the word of God. Now, don't you notice something? We're not to give Satan one little spot. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Now, in, the, in that passage of Scripture, if you go back and study it, it's talking about anger, it's talking about wrath, and when we give in to anger and wrath, what we do, we open up ourselves to the devil. But I want you to notice something about this passage of Scripture. That word place right there, if you look at the, the, the original meaning, it, it's a spot. It's general in space, but limited by occupancy. Whereas the word that it comes from is for a large space. In other words, it's not talking about not giving the devil 
place or a big spot. It's talking about don't give the devil one little spot, Tony. One, if that's what it's talking about, Brother Billy. It's not talking about, hey, Jesus didn't say don't give him your whole body. He said don't even give him one spot. One little smidgen of a place. How many times do we give the devil that spot in our life? Well, I do all this good. I do this, I do that, I do this good, I do that good, I do this good, I do that good. And, 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 but this one little spot I have trouble with. You got to understand something. He's looking for a spot or he's already got one. And the thing about it is, if it's unoccupied by Christ, guess who's there? If Jesus ain't controlling your tongue, Guess who's controlling your tongue? That's one little spot, ain't it? What does the Bible tell us about the tongue? How that the tongue is one little member, brother, brother Mickey, but it can turn the whole body. Talking about the, the rudder of a ship. Hey, that's one little spot. Hey, when Satan has got your tongue, he might as well have your whole body. How about your eyes? When he's got your eyes, he's got the windows to your soul. How about your ears? How about your hands? Jesus said, don't even give place. To the devil. I got to think about this thing as I've studied it. But Jimmy, how many people started with one spot? The Gadarean demoniac. That was running around naked in the tomb. I mean, the Bible says they couldn't control him. They couldn't tame him. He started, Alan, with one spot. Eve started with one spot and got everybody kicked out of the garden. How about us? Folks, I'm just trying to pull back the curtain tonight. you got to understand something. I'm not your enemy. Satan is your enemy. And he's doing his very best to kill, steal, and destroy. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 5 about a man named Ananias and Sapphira. They sold a piece of property and kept back just a, kept back just a spot. Just a spot. And the Bible says the Holy Ghost killed him. wonder how many funerals we'd have at Liberty Free Will Baptist Church. The Holy Ghost came down and searched out right now for one spot. Folks, we need to stand against Satan. The Bible tells us in James chapter 4, Submit yourselves therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That word resist right there basically means to stand or oppose. How do we stand? The Bible's claim. We submit to God. We submit every aspect of our life. Every area of our life, if you've got a part of your life that's not submitted to God, then it's submitted to the devil. The Bible goes on to talk about how we, we must resist. We, we, to stand. Resist. It didn't say get up and fight. It just said resist. How many of us? I had a friend of mine back in Conway. He's gone on to be with the Lord. He liked to joke around and cut up. And we, was, we was working one day, and uh, this, we was working in this apartment. This, this young lady walked by, and she was very pretty. He said, whoo, get behind me, Satan, and push. The problem is most of us think that way. Instead of rebuking the devil, we got that in our mind. That's a spot, folks. We're supposed to resist. And then we're supposed to draw close to the Lord. Chapter 4, verse 8 says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Amen? How do you draw nigh to God? Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You ever thought about this? How many of you remember in the Bible, and they, we do it in the Easter play, when Pilate called for the water, what did he do? He cleansed his hands. That was, that was a token of innocence. How many of us tonight could cleanse our hands before the Lord tonight? How many of us tonight could really come in and, and do what the Bible says, purify our hearts? How do you win against Satan? It's one thing to preach about, preacher. How do you win again? How do you beat him? 1 Peter 5, 8 tells us, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking 
whom he may devour. And I've said this before, you've got to choose to let him devour you. That's your choice. Seeking whom he may devour. Jesus said, Peter, Satan desired, or Satan has demanded to have you, but I prayed for you. When he comes against, he says, Wes, Satan has demanded you, but I prayed for you. If you submit yourself to God, you draw nigh to God, you can beat him. The Bible tells us to be sober-minded. What does that mean? That, that means not dull-minded. The Bible talks about a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We need to have our minds focused on Jesus. The Bible tells us that. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the Bible says, Therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. It's, he's talking to Christians. He's not talking to a bunch of drunks. He's talking to sober-minded Christians. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, be dr- drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and of love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. That word watch there is the same word they use for sober. Be sober. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end of the grace that is brought to you by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Chapter 4, verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. That be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. I was thinking about this. Why was Peter so hung up on being sober-minded? Because it didn't take but one time for him not to be sober-minded, to let the devil get in one spot And he denied Jesus. Think about that for a minute. Peter Peter, uh, uh, just kept on. Be sober-minded. Be sober-minded. Why is is he he putting this, ramming this home to us? Because it don't take but one time. All it takes is one time. And the devil's got you. One spot and he's already got you. We all know the saying, if you give the devil an inch, he'll rule your life. All it takes is one time of not having your mind focused, one time of letting your mind drift. All right, man, let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever let your mind drift? All, all, these, all these women is holy, you know. You know, they don't have those lustful thoughts like most of us men do. They don't, you know. Ain't no, ain't no women saying amen. Y'all mean y'all had to say, y'all let y'all's mind drift too? Well, Larry, all it takes one time. One time. There's been a lot of marriages been destroyed because somebody let their mind drift one time. There's been a lot of homes destroyed because somebody let their mind drift one time. And that's the wiles of the devil. That's what he's doing. We need to stand against him. We need to defeat him by being sober-minded. You can't be you can't be sober-minded and make a conscious choice to miss church. Well, I ain't going tonight. I just don't feel like going. I ain't going. Yep, that ain't sober-minded. People wonder why they fall, why they deal with such stuff as they have to deal with, because they're not sober-minded. Folks, we have a real enemy, and he hates your guts. He hates anything that stands for God. He hates anything that is trying to do something for God. Why do you think the devil has fought us today like he has? Why? He knew I was going to preach this, Brother Larry. He was there when I was studying it, Greg. He was watching over my shoulder. He knew what I was going to preach this morning. He was there when I I sat at that computer, Brother Jerry, and typed it out. And there was a little demon sitting over my shoulder saying, Oh, no, oh, no, we can't preach that. We're going to fight that. And I'm telling you, they got all the little imps together. Do you realize the devil's a lot more organized than the church? Nowhere in that Bible, nowhere in that Bible do you find demons arguing with each other. 
Nowhere through church history is it ever written down throughout church history that demons argued with each other. But let's bring in the church family. I don't think I need to say nothing else right there. I think y'all got the point. Folks, if we're not sober-minded, he'll destroy you. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We can win. We can win. How you know, preacher? Because I've had some folks that go before me that won. Without a doubt. I know they in heaven, without a doubt. The devil cannot mess with them again. And one of these days, folks, Jesus is coming after us. But we got to stay the course. We've got to be sober-minded till he gets here. And hold on. And hold on. I want you to bow your heads.